YouTubers, I am back with another HTB on wood tutorial. Um, we've done it once before, but this was with my iron. And you got to be really careful or else you'll melt the HTB, I know, oddly enough. So, I'm back, and this time, we're going to use the Cricut Easy Presses to do this. The nice thing I like about the Cricut Easy Press is it's bigger, and then it's more consistent with the heat. Um, and iron will have hot spots and not so hot spots. And that's what kind of will give you occasionally meltage. So, um, I really like this. It's such a fun little way to decorate your house. Um, I made these up in like no time at all. So, and these are the 8x8 wood canvases. So, I bought them as is from Amazon. You can also get them at the home, uh, the, any of the craft stores, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, let me go show you what you need and what I did to get these. All right, so you're gonna need a wood canvas or a wood of some kind. Um, the little ones are eight by eight, um, a set of five I got at um, Amazon for $27. So these are little eight by eight ones. This is a bigger one I got at Hobby Lobby. Sometimes you can get them half price at Hobby Lobby, but any, any of them will work. Now to prep them, I sanded them. This is 320. I sanded them and painted them with just regular craft paint out of my stash. Um, and then I used, I did use the tack cloth in between to rub off any dust from the sanding. And most of them have at least two coats. Um, this and the sanding isn't necessary. It just makes them look better and it makes them much nicer to feel. Um, and then you're going to need, this is a 9x9 Cricut Easy Press. Um, they have them in various sizes. This one when I bought it was about $150. The Cricut Easy Presses, I kind of like and I kind of don't. <laughs> um, they're not a heat press. The, the big thing with the heat press is the pressure too along with the heat, which this guy doesn't always, oh, this guy doesn't allow for. There's no way to get a consistent even pressure with him besides trying to hold it down and kind of guess. But it is nice because it heats up really fast and it doesn't heat up my entire basement. That heat press when I turn it on, especially in the summer, whew, it is its own little sauna. So that's what's kind of nice about this and it works really well for this because they're the same size. We put it on and we'll go. So you're also going to need some heat tape, not 100% necessary, but nice and a scraper. So let me show you an obviously HTV. You're going to need your HTV design weeded and ready to go. Um, let me show you how to kind of set it up in the software real quick and then we'll get working. All right, so something I just want to show you real quick. We're in Silhouette Studio. This is a new document. So my little wood blocks are eight by eight. So I can go in here and I clicked my rectangle tool and just drew a rectangle and then go back and hit the arrow else you'll just keep drawing rectangles. Move over here to the transform panel and to the scale. And I can hit eight and eight. And now I have a square and I can make my square any color that I want to over here in the fill panel. And then I can bring in my design. So say we're going to bring this one in. And then I'm just going to flip him. I flip my square. make it white and now you can see and get the scale right for it you can also change the colors to so say I want it pink or whatever color you want to you can see what it's basically gonna look like see this would be your wood and then this would be whatever color HTB you want to color and cut so and then you would get rid of this guy and make sure you flip it and cut it like you would any other HTB so we're going to see how this goes. This is one of the HTV Opal HTVs, so you can see it's really shiny. And then this is my paint of a block. I do like to give the, um, the paint at least 24 hours, if not longer, to cure. If it doesn't, it's just a nightmare. It won't stick. It'll just peel up the paint. So, and then if you stick this and you're peeling up any paint of any kind, it's not going to work. Let it dry some more. Also, on the back... You can paint, so this is the back of the rooster. You can apply HP and see what it looks like. So you can kind of 
make one that and see how it goes. So this is the little, um, this one's stained with mid wax. And then I put some on the back to see maybe which one I would like the best. So you can do that as well. So also I have my heat tape over here and some scissors for it and my little scraper. And I've also got, um, this is a piece of part peach piece of parchment. I kind of use it as cheap insurance from the easy press. I have the easy press turned on and set for 315 for 15 seconds. We're going to do at least two presses um, to see how to get it to stick. Um, I have not had it actually stick after one press. So, so, so you can position and then I like to use the heat tape. It's kind of optional, but it's kind of some cheap insurance to make sure but it doesn't move. Now this heat tape is a little, or this, this opal is a little bit thicker than regular HTV, so this might be a little bit interesting. I'm gonna put this on. Put this guy on top. Let me press the green button. And I like to hold it in place and provide a little gentle pressure. off and then what I do is I scrape to kind of gently encourage. We'll do it one more time. So I'm gonna I'm going to go double check real quick if this is a cold peel or a hot peel. But regardless, I do like to let them sit just for a minute and cool down. All right. So this is a warm peel. I haven't used it that much. I wasn't sure. A lot of the foils are cold peel. So basically we peel and pray. And if it doesn't want to come off, you can either try to provide some encouragement with your scraper or you can um, hit it again with the heat press or the Cricut Easy Press. Now once you get it peeled off, I like to hit it one more time with the, the press. Just to make sure. And you definitely need either parchment or Teflon. You can't do this straight on that. And the other thing I like about this is it kind of puts it in the wood a little bit more. So it leaves the kind of the indentation on the wood so that it looks a little bit more in there. So if you don't want that, then don't hit it again with the press. All right, so here's a little moment of honesty. I had wanted to do this one, but the paint wasn't dry enough, I don't think. And so it wasn't sticking because it's just sticking to the paint and the paint was peeling out. So I do screw up quite often. <laughs> I don't always show y'all, but I do screw up. But anyway, this is what happens if your paint isn't fairly fully cured. I would in a perfect world, let it um, paint it and then let it sit for a while. This is also old paint. So, and it's been raining, but this is kind of old weird paint because I've been painting a long time. So I do have a complete dud. But... This one was really dry, so thankfully I had a backup. But I love this with the holographic or the opal. Now you could in do this with any kind of vinyl that you earn into, any HTV, um, flocked, glitter. And the other thing I like is you get three really different looks. You could do a set of four that would really be cute up on the wall that would match, um, be personalized. Um, so, and it's great, it's really quick relatively speaking, and you get something that genuinely looks like you bought it. So I'm a big fan. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, there's a link down to everything used in the video in the description below. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Please subscribe.